Hi everyone and welcome to the fourth and final video in this little video series on CIFO and in many ways on Cannes de Albicans. So as a quick recap, in the first video we discussed um, what CIFO is and the symptoms that have been associated with it in the research. In the second video we discussed the risk factors, so what are some of the things that might actually allow an overgrowth of Cannes de to occur in the small intestine. In the third video we discussed testing and today I want to touch on some of the evidence-based therapeutic interventions for those with CIFO. So let's start with probiotics. We know that certain strains of lactobacillus contain or produce sorry, hydrogen peroxide which has an antifungal property to it. We also have studies showing us the benefits of Saccharomyces boulardii, a yeast strain probiotic that has actually been shown to be as effective as the commonly prescribed antifungal medication called nystatin. So the evidence is very clear that these more sort of natural interventions can actually be incredibly effective and therapeutic. So those are two first considerations. We do obviously need to think about diet as well and I appreciate there is lots of information out there around the anti-candida diet but we don't have any published evidence on it and that's not to say that we want to ignore it there is a huge amount of anecdotal evidence that people trying an anti-candida diet can see improvement in their symptoms and, and sometimes very quickly but the way that I would look at it is it's not likely addressing the underlying imbalances that led to the fungal overgrowth in the first place. So it might be a little bit like a low FODMAP diet. It's helping manage the symptoms, but it's not addressing the underlying issue. And therefore we have to use it with a degree of caution. And I've said for years with clients, the restrictiveness of the diet needs to I think correlate with the severity of symptoms. The more you are suffering the more aggressive we might be with the diet for a very short period of time while we also start to address the underlying imbalances. I personally would take an approach whereby we obviously want to reduce and to the best of our ability avoid refined processed carbohydrates but I don't go as far certainly from a generic perspective in saying avoid all grains or avoid fruit. I think we are potentially causing more harm than good when we go on to some of these restrictive diets. So I would encourage you to eat a certain amount of fruit, certainly berries for example, and I would suggest that for many of you with CIFO you will still be able to tolerate a degree of whole grains, maybe some whole grain rice or some whole wheat pasta if gluten is tolerated. But as I say, the diet has to be tailored to the individual. Some people might not be able to tolerate some of the foods I've just listed for other reasons apart from the fact that they have a candida overgrowth. So the diet does need to be personalized and therefore it's hard to talk about with any level of precision in a video on the topic of CIFO. Now bear in mind we mentioned in the first video that in studies that have looked into this around 25% of participants have had SIBO and CIFO simultaneously. So some people may need to go on to somewhat of a low FODMAP diet to manage the symptoms associated with the bacterial overgrowth and therefore that kind of muddies the water and complicates things a little bit more. And this is why a personalized approach whereby you are listening to your body in regards to how it's responding to these foods I think is going to be really important. But many of us are going to have to make some at least little modifications to the diet as a way to improve our symptoms in the short term. Probiotics, as we've discussed, are already going to help rebalance that microbiome and actually help reduce some of that fungal overgrowth. NAC has also been shown to have a antibiofilm mechanism to it, meaning it might break down biofilms associated with candida albicans and therefore help improve the overall ecosystem or microbiome within the small and large intestine. 
We then have herbs and essential oils from things like oregano oil that again in the research have been shown to have antifungal properties. So we have probiotics, we have NAC, we have herbal antifungals or antimicrobials. We have changes to the diet. We also might need to think around stomach acidity. We discussed in video two in this series, the risk factors of CFO, one of them being the use of proton pump inhibitors or PPI such as imeprazole. So if we do have low stomach acid, for whatever reason that may be, that needs to be addressed if we are going to have any chance of successfully eradicating CFO and SIBO. Now, low stomach acid could be caused by the use of PPIs, but it might be caused by chronic stress. It could be caused by issues in thyroid function. And related to all of that, there could be imbalances within vagal tone, within the vagus nerve, which might impact on appropriate pH within the stomach. So I think it's really important that when we think about interventions for CFO, our primary consideration is what do we suspect allowed the overgrowth to occur in the first place? So I encourage you all to go back and watch video two to understand what these risk factors are, because one of those might need to be addressed, which will require a relatively specific intervention as well as thinking about some of these slightly more generic interventions that have been shown to be effective in the evidence. Um, finally, I want to touch on butyrate. Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid produced by various bacteria after they ferment various types of dietary fiber or carbohydrates such as resistant starch. Now in the research, we know that retrograded resistant starch, which is found in things like cooked and cooled potatoes or cooked and cooled rice, is one of the most potent ways that we can support the production of butyrate in the large intestine and potentially a little bit in the small intestine as well, considering that we know there are receptors for butyrate in the small intestine. And butyrate has an antimicrobial property to it. It also supports motility, which is really important within the context of the small and large intestine as well. But you can supplement butyrate, and maybe in the short term, this is a sensible option for some people. My preferred option is try Buterin. Uh, there are various brands that sell this version of butyrate, including Designs for Health. And I will add links to some of these products below just so you can check them out as well. And really guys, those are the most evidence-based therapeutic interventions that we have for CFO. I can't stress enough the importance in trying to understand the underlying cause, what happens that allowed the overgrowth to occur in the first place. That has to be sort of front and center of the plan to improve your health. And sometimes that's when working with a practitioner one-to-one -one can be really helpful. My hope is that this series of videos has just given you a, a better understanding of CFO and some of the things that we need to consider within the treatment plan. Any questions, comments, or thoughts? If you've found other things that have been helpful for you, then just leave a comment below.